Yes, so I did go through an editor, but I had already done major of the editing myself. So there was uh, not much change, you know, in the book after the editing editor did their job. So it was more or less, it was more of just some consistency in language hmm. or correction here and there. But uh, yeah, basic corrections were done by an editor. I did go with the editor because at that point I was like, hey, it's my first book. I don't know if I'm you know, doing the right thing. So I thought editors would know better. So I did uh, go through the editor route. Yeah. Okay. Um, did that process of going through the editor help you go through the publishing process smoothly? Uh, how did you publish? Can you tell us a little more about that whole publishing process? Because at least in my mind, I see I went through a different route altogether, which I can you know talk to you in another episode. I went through a different route altogether, and maybe that made it a little easy. But there are so many things that I may want to do differently. And mm. personally, I'm thinking how to republish. So that uh, I want to make a few changes, for example, in the cover. I would like to handle the whole uh, process of it's right now. The book is on Amazon. It's on Flipkart, but pr probably I want to market it in a different way. So I'm mm -hmm. thinking of republishing myself and uh, your thoughts on that. The platform that you have experimented. Can you tell us about it? Okay. So I uh, initially my thoughts were I wanted to self-publish, uh, just go. You know, with my own thing and I was sitting like I'll do it I knew how to do it on KDP and I was like fine I'll manage uh, KDP with stands that. for uh, Kindle Direct Publishing ah. yeah so I I thought I'll just go that route uh, but then what happened I had actually set myself a deadline that I wanted to launch my book at uh, PSS which I did so I, then, then earlier in PSA in one of the discussions and somebody told me that if you are self-publishing on KDP, you do not get hard copy prints in India at a cheap price because they don't have a printing facility in India. So they would print somewhere else and they will ship it to India. So that increases the cost of the book. Mm. So at that point, I'm like, oh, wait, there is so much more than, you know, what I thought. Uh, so then I tried to find out, okay, how do I then publish, like print a physical book and I was also running short of time because I knew if I go through a publisher, they do take some time, right? So I didn't want to risk losing my launch uh, target. So at that point, I'm like, okay, you know what, forget, I'll figure out myself publishing maybe for the next time. But this time I just went with Notion Press. Uh, Notion Press is a self-publishing platform also. You can self-publish or you can ask them to help you in publishing also. So I just went to them and saying, okay, help me with it. Uh, they have different packages that you can choose, you know, which include marketing, don't include marketing, or just the basic uh, printing of the book and, you know, getting it listed on the various sites. So I did take a package that kind of included uh, the editing, the you know, designing and all of that, yeah. So it was an interesting thing to learn. I think going through that process, I was like, okay, yeah, there's a lot that goes into a book. It could be done by yourself. Like you can do all of that. Uh, I didn't feel like, oh, without this, I couldn't have published my book. That never happened, but it was okay. It was more streamlined, I guess, uh, with somebody else also looking at it once. There was a sense of confidence that, okay, I'm not missing anything. Yeah. Interesting. So there is speaking, there is coaching, there is authoring. Maybe there are more... Uh you know, books in the lineup for us. Yeah? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, as a recovering workaholic and a mom, how do you balance your personal life along with all these passions that you have? So, that is a work in progress, I can say. I can't fully say, oh, yeah, I balance it all very well. Uh, I have much, much better now than I used to be, you know, maybe even five, six years back. But... I think it comes down to the simple things always. It's always about ourselves, how we manage our attention and focus and time and our energy, more importantly, than anything else. So for me, it has always come down to, okay, how do I manage my time? So today I have, uh, for example, now my son started going to school. So he goes to school, he comes back by one o'clock. So I have like about that four hour window where he's not at home. And that's my time to do anything. So I started realizing that, okay, so this is my time. So if I have to work on anything, it's that four hour window, mm -hmm. right? So then for me, the biggest tool or the best thing that has helped is time tracking and time blocking. 
So basically, this means if I have to work on some task and I say, for example, even cooking, right? It's something as simple as, okay, I have to cook or I have to go pick up my child. I know that will take half an hour to pick up. I know it takes one hour to cook. So I have blocked off that time every day saying, okay, this time, this day, I'm going to be cooking. So my entire calendar is kind of filled out with every little thing that I possibly can. Of course, leaving plenty of room for surprises, emergencies, for not feeling like it, you know. All of that. But yeah, so for me, the thing that keeps me sane is my calendar. And that's the only thing that makes me do a lot of things. If it's not on the calendar, I can actually mess up a lot. Do you get choked when you block your calendar and everything has to be done one after the other? You did say that, you know, you do keep a plenty of flexibility. But does it tire you out? You know, so many colors on the calendar, this activity, that activity. Do you just feel, what do you feel about it? I used to. So when I started time blocking, that was exactly me. I was like, oh my God, like calendar is so full. And I would feel like, okay, this task, next task. You know, I always thought I was kept on a clock. Uh, but I have actually started to fall in love with the process. It's not about staying on the clock. It's about clarifying your intentions for the day. Like, okay, today I have this much time. What do I want to do with this much time? Right? It's about priorita prioritizing your task. It's about telling yourself, okay, this is what I'm going to do today. And that way you actually have time for everything you want to do, right? Some things will get dropped off because you just don't have time for it. And that's where you have to learn how to say no to a certain thing and, you know, ask for help when you need it. All of that starts coming. So it's not like, for example, if I say, okay, nine to 10, I'm going to do a task. And if it becomes 9.30 because the previous task got delayed, I panic. I'm like, oh, I, don't, I lost this task. It's not like that. So there is there is some buffer kept and there is some so in fact I don't even do every half an hour blocks I do big chunks so for example if I'm saying I'm going to uh, you know work on some video creation for example I give myself two hour block that's it so the work may get done in 30 minutes and then I have extra time and if it takes over that's fine I just redo my uh, schedule for the next day and it's more like a direction for me it's not a, a you know strict rule that you have to stick to this time yeah, so the calendar and time blocking just gives me a direction of, okay, this is what I want to be doing. This is what I'm focusing on this week. That is a very important lesson for me. There have been very few days in life when I get through my checklist of to-do items. Mostly it goes to the next day. And at the end of the week, I'm not really done with my tasks. I've started uh, to understand that I factor in way little time for my tasks. You know, I maybe overestimate myself i'm not sure but that happens and at the end of it you know <laughs> we all do <laughs> so at the end of it i do feel a little stressed so i'm going to take this suggestion and you know implement that and let's see how that goes should go well but can you also give uh, our viewers you're talking about productivity you're talking about balancing uh, life responsibilities and passion and you have authored a set book from all of what you are can you give our authors three key messages today? Okay. Number one, we spend too much time at work. We spend more than one third of our lives at work. But are we really being intentional about this? Is this a work that lights you up? You know, it's, I'm not talking about passion, right? That's an entire different topic. I'm not saying, is it your passion? But I'm saying, does it light you up to go to work? You will have hard days. You will have challenges. But... Is what you're spending your majority time on something that you actually want to do, right? And are you doing it well enough? If you just think about these aspects, you will change your relationship with your work. And that will change your entire life, number one, right? Number two, there is never an end to what you can possibly do, right? If you set your mind to it, you will do it. So the thing is about to decide what you want to do. For me, that was the biggest thing. I decided I have to write a book. I decided I want to become a coach. And things happened after that. So I think that decision is very important. When we start second guessing ourselves, okay, is this right? Is this wrong? Uh, should I do this? Should I do that's where all the overthinking, anxiety, and you know, everything starts popping up. But if you can actually decide, right, you will do it. It's like if you decide to watch TV, you will watch TV no matter what has happened, right? So it's, it's as simple as that. So you have to make sure you decide. So number one, re rethink your relationship with your work. Number two, decide. And number three, life is too short. <laughs>
don't stress too much about it have fun and make sure you get better every single day that's all <laughs> wow thank you what if you have to, you what if you have too many interests in life work is one aspect personal life is another aspect life is too short and you want to chase too many dreams if we have too many dreams then you're talking to me i i told you i am the jack of all trades <laughs> so i have a big list of things i want to do i want to achieve and the thing is thing to remember is we cannot achieve all of it at once right so focus on one thing at a time saying okay for example if you want to go on a trip you can't go on 10 trips today right you have to plan your trips out you have to say okay i will go on this trip this year this trip next year this trip whatever whenever possible or things like that so that's exactly how you deal with any interests that you have and it doesn't take much time i used to think like this i used to be like oh i want to go dancing i want to go cycling i just don't have time for it well switch that question around okay how much time do you need right saying so, oh i'm good if i maybe dance once a week or twice a week great so go to a dance class that has two classes a week right if you want to say i want to paint saying okay do you want to paint every day or do you want to paint once in a while no i want to complete one painting great work on that you will always have time but you can't do everything at once right so that's why that's where time blocking also matters so for me i actually plan my downtime the first thing i do in the calendar is plan my downtime So I actually plan my activities out first. So today I'm going. This is my exercise block. This is my yoga block. They may happen, may not happen, but I still have time for it. So it's a, it's just a switch in terms of asking. Instead of saying I don't have time, if we just start thinking how much time do I need and where can I find it, we actually find our own solutions. It's important to understand what your capabilities are, how much time you have, what are your responsibilities, and come to a balanced decision about what you want to have in life, and prioritize for peace of mind. Yeah. Okay. Yes, absolutely. So for me, it's all about prioritization, planning it out up front. Otherwise, yeah, days will fly, months will fly, years will fly, and you'll be like, I haven't done anything. Absolutely, the feeling that a lot of us go through. Thank you so much, Peggy, for gracing us with your presence. I must say, thank you so much, and I hope to see you on more episodes in uh, the days to come. Absolutely, it was such a wonderful uh, chat with you, Midhu. Thank you for having me over. It was my entire pleasure to be here. Thank you. See you. Yeah.